Well, wonderful. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. It's such a, uh, a wonderful honor to, to be part of uh, new families, uh, new growth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So back to our, our message for tonight. And that is God's mighty wind. And it's all about the Holy Spirit and about the process that the Holy Spirit takes us through to mature us and to make us what God wants us to be. It's all about the working of the Holy Spirit. You know, and I have this little little chorus in me. You know, I, I love to sing, uh, but it's it goes like this. Move, Holy Spirit, move. Do what you want to do. Now listen to this part. I yield myself a vessel you can use as you choose. Move, Holy Spirit, move. And see, God is calling for the winds to come from the four corners of the earth uh, to invade his, his children, to invade us. Hallelujah. To, he's going to do three things in this process. He's going to stir us up. He's going to shake us up. And he's going to separate us out. You know, when I get to that separation part, you know, there's things that, that I can't sit through anymore. I can't go and sit through a meeting where the truth is not being taught. I can't do that anymore. I could uh, years ago when I was first born again, uh, when I was a new Christian, I could just go and sit there and, and enjoy the singing and enjoy uh, things that were not the truth. I can't do that anymore. And but the Lord, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He's our teacher. And like Wendy was saying, she was getting line on line, precept upon precept. Well, that's what the Holy Spirit does. And he begins to stir us up. In 2 Timothy 1.6, Paul told Timothy, Therefore, I remind you, stir yourself up. Stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Now, that's impartation, but it's also what Jesus, uh, when we become Christians, the Father comes in, the Jesus, the Word comes in, and the Holy Spirit comes in. So what was well, what was Paul really telling Timothy? He was saying, Timothy, stir up that Holy Spirit. Stir him up. You know, and that's what we do when we pray in our prayer language. We stir up the Holy Spirit. And it says in, in 2 Peter 3, 1, Beloved, I now, I now write to you uh, this, in that, that you stir up your pure minds. And so we stir up the Holy Spirit inside of us, and then we begin to have a new mindset, and we begin to think differently. And that's what it's all about when we says renew your mind. Well, you can't do it without the Holy Spirit. He's the wind. He is the one that will stir you up. And, you know, I can listen to some some good teaching and, and powerful teaching, and, and my Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit within my spirit begins to leap up and down. And I begin to get excited about the word of God that's coming forth. That's the wind. That's God's mighty wind, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And in Acts 6, verse 10 through uh, 12, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. And then they secretly uh, induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses. And they stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him, seized him. Now, this is when Stephen was, was preaching the word. 
And, and Stephen was led by the Spirit of God, but he was he was accused and he was ridiculed and he was mocked and and all evil was said about him. But see, he was stirred up. He was stirred up, and I believe that he stirred up some of the people. You know, Paul was standing there as they began to stone Stephen. And I believe that that was the beginning. The wind began to, to stir up Paul. And so he was ready when uh, on the road to Damascus, he, he was ready to be knocked off of his donkey and for Jesus to say, you know, why do you persecute me? And, and, and Paul says, well, who are you, Lord? And uh, what, did, what, did, what did Jesus say back to him? What did he say? It's hard to kick. It's hard to kick, it's hard to kick against the pricks. The, the pricks. It's, hard, <clears throat> it's hard when the violent wind is out there tugging at your heart. Every one of us on this session tonight, you know what I'm talking about. When the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart. Somebody give us an example of that. When you've been in a place where you know that the Holy Spirit is, is wanting you to do something different or wanting you to go somewhere uh, to do something. Give us an example. I can give an example. Um, right. One of the sisters who, um, a few weeks ago, her, her grandson was hit by a car when, you know, when she went to pick up a grandchild and she brought this younger one. And she didn't know me very well. We met one or twice. But then she texted me and said, could you pray for me and my family? Of course, we pray together on the phone. And then two days later, um, God moved me like... <laughs> told me to visit her. I have, oh. we didn't know each other well. So, and even God told me which gift it was Chinese New Year time, you know? So I have some Chinese bakery, you know, at home. Oh yeah, yeah. So we went and she said, I, I'm, I'm so happy that you came. When neighbors who are not believers asked me how my grandchild was doing, I was just crying. And uh, I, I didn't want to, put clothes on or wash my face. I'm just now cast, I have penny attack. And she said, when you said you're coming, I dress up, I wash my face, <laughs> my hair, and we had a good fellowship, we prayed together. And I told oh, her that. I, I felt like when I pray, I told her, I went in the afternoon, but I said, in this morning, when I pray for your grandchild, I have, I have peace, so don't worry. And before I arrived home, she texts me, it was in the afternoon. The doctor said the MRI result is normal. So, so, so he was at Thank you, Jesus. You know, in the hospital. So I praise God that God moved me. And I felt like that day, I felt like that's the right thing, the right time to do the right thing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Woo! That's good. That is an excellent example. <laughs> and that's how God moves us and with with that mighty wind, with his Holy Spirit. He moves on our hearts. He, and uh and when we obey, then we we bless others and we're also blessed ourselves, you know, tremendously. And and so well, thank you for that. That was beautiful. Well, you know, when I think about the disciples. You know, Jesus said, um, he told them, go to the other side, get in the boat and go to the other side. And so they get in the boat and he gets in the boat with them. And I'm in Mark chapter four and in, in verse 37, it says, and a great windstorm arose. And that word windstorm right there, again, a violent agitation. And the, the waves began to get bigger and bigger and the water became, uh, got, was getting into the boat and, and the disciples were afraid. And, and it says that, that the boat was being filled up. And they went and they woke Jesus up. And, and, and Jesus got up and he spoke to the, spoke to the wind. He prophesied to the wind. And he said, peace, be still. So let me ask you, why do you think that that 
windstorm came up. Now they had just gone through, Jesus had just gone through the teaching on um, the seed, sowing the seed. And some seeds fall on the wayside and some into thorns and, and some into good ground. And, and so he was, he was talking about faith. He was talking about faith to his disciples. And then he said, get in the boat and go to the other side. And so I was thinking about that. Well, there was this windstorm and the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And, and I believe that his disciples were to have faith. And in fact, Jesus says, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? I've just been teaching you. <laughs> I've just been teaching, you know, the about the seed and the sower goes forth to sow the seed. And um and so some there are times when when we need to um the word is suffer and it actually means allow. Allow the Holy Spirit to move on the inside of us and teach us, um, you know, some things so that we can move forward uh, in our walk with him. Otherwise, we just stay right where we are. And there's some people that are very comfortable there. They want to stay right where they are. Uh, and they don't want to learn anything new. They don't want to do anything new. They just want to be right there. But But the Lord wants us to go forward. And so in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter seven, verse one, it says, after these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth and that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea or any tree. But right now what God is doing, he's releasing though that those four winds to come into the earth and to move things into position because Jesus is coming back and we need to be prepared and we need to be ready uh, for his return. Now, so we need to be stirred up. We need to allow or suffer the Lord to stir us up. I want to be stirred up tonight and I want you to be stirred up. Um, the second Thing that this process does is shake and it shakes things off of us that do, does not need to be there maybe it's fear maybe it's anxiety maybe it is uh, doubt and unbelief um, in Hebrews 12 26 through 28 let's look at this whose voice then shook the earth hallelujah now God's power is the Holy Spirit, okay? But he's speaking through the Holy Spirit. But now he has promised saying, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal, the removal of those things that can be shaken as of things that are made the things that which cannot be shaken may remain. And so the Holy Spirit is the one that shakes us. Ooh, hallelujah. He might be shaking your mind. He might be shaking those things off of your body. He might be shaking those things internally that are that need to be gotten rid of. And it says here, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptable with reverence and with godly fear. So he is going to shake those things off of us that do not need to be there. Let's go down to 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, therefore, laying aside. Now, th these are the things that the Holy Spirit will shake off of us if we will allow him to move in our life malice deceit hypocrisy 
envy, and all evil spirit, uh, all evil speaking. He will get rid of all of that stuff if we will allow him to do that. So we're going to stir up. He's going to stir us up, but we also can stir up the Holy Spirit inside of us by speaking in tongues and praising the Lord by praying, hallelujah. And then he begins to move in our thinking. He begins to move in, a, in what we say. He begins to move in our in our families. Woo, hallelujah. He begins to move when we let him move. Then in Hebrews 12, therefore laying aside, lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us and lets us run and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. The Holy Spirit, the wind, the mighty wind of God does all of this. He he shows us what those, it might be unworthiness. It might be um, guilt and condemnation. It might be anger, unforgiveness. What is it that has held you down from moving forward? Now, I believe that every one of us desires to go higher with the Lord. I believe that that's why you are in this, this group. And I believe that we all have that desire. Lord, I want to, to be more in your presence. I want to be more like you, Lord. I want to make an impact in, in this life, you know, uh, Brother Fred is 79, I'm 77, and we want to make an impact. And wherever we go, we want to make an impact. And uh, and so we, we thank the Lord for his word, and we thank the Lord for the mighty wind of God. And it says here in Luke 21, well, now I want to go to Acts 4, Acts 4, 31. I don't know if you've ever been in a meeting where things began to shake, but but we have been in meetings where the we could we could we knew by the Spirit that the Holy Spirit, the wind of God, was in that place. And so I want you to be thinking of of if you have an example to use, but here's what I'm going to give you right now. But let's read the scripture first, Acts 4.31. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. And that's what the Holy Spirit will give you uh, when, when he begins to move in your life. He'll give you more boldness, more boldness. Hallelujah. But here's the example I want to, to give you. Uh, there was a graduate student. Uh, hey, Mary. <laughs> uh, there was a graduate student that Brother Fred had, and she was from Taiwan. And she was an evangelist. And we would have her to come for for a meal and George and George, George and Joy have, have eaten at our table. And, uh, but, uh, but this young woman uh, was very powerful and uh, she, we would, she would come over to the house and we would pray. Well, there was, before she came one day, um, I had a vision as I was getting ready for the day. <clears throat> in my bathroom mirror. And I think I've shared this before. I saw a man kneeling before the Lord. I saw a white figure and I knew that that was the Lord. I saw a black gentleman kneeling down in front of, of the Lord. And he said, what is required of me? 
And the Lord spoke back to him and said, one thing is required of you, and that is that you love. I kept that to myself because it was it was one of the first visions uh, that I had had. <coughs> and so I was, um, I, I didn't want to, to, to tell everybody about having a vision in my bathroom mirror. And, but, but she came one day and we began to pray and, and the Lord said, tell her about your vision. So I said, okay. And so I told her about the, the man kneeling down in front of, of the Lord. And as I began uh, to tell her my dining room uh, lamp uh, chandelier, mm -hmm began to move back and forth move back and forth and she and she began to shake and i said what what's going on with you and she said do you not know who that was that you saw and i said no no i didn't recognize the man and she said you saw william seymour who began the great revival in in los angeles at azusa street she said there is a book that's written by uh, about him and in the book he he said that he knelt before the lord and said to the lord ask the lord what is required of me and jesus spoke back to him and said one thing is required of you and that is that you love and so this this was a vision that i had of this this man and she said that was him you saw him and we began to rejoice and but the chandelier shook for a while and she shook for a while and i know that that was the holy spirit that was the holy spirit now we're going to get rid of all these things by letting the holy spirit move us and shake us up we're going to be shaken by the holy spirit and then the third thing that the holy spirit does is separate us from unbelievers like i said you will not once you are stirred up and and shaken up and then separated out you are you're you you cannot sit in a meeting where there's nothing going on or where there's untruth being spoken you cannot do that the holy spirit will separate you out you know and it's it's called um windowing in the book of ruth it says now boaz whose young women you were with he is is, is he not your relative? I believe this is Naomi speaking. In fact, he is winnowing. He is separating out the barley tonight at the threshing floor. Now, the threshing floor represents the presence of God. And so, that's when Naomi sent Ruth to lay at the feet of Jesus in the, at the, in the threshing floor. But what was he doing? He was separating out the wheat from the chaff and that's what the holy spirit does with us i thank the lord for that i had some wrong thinking some denominational thinking and all of that had to get, had to go and and i still you know i still ask the lord if there's any religious thinking in me get it out i want it to i want it separated out so that i can be who you want me to be in second corinthians six seventeen, therefore come out from among them and be ye separate says the lord do not touch what is unclean and i will receive you so he's calling us out he is calling the winds to come into 
each one of you into your home, into your family. He's calling the wind to come. Whoo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I speak that over every single one of us right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, come with your Holy Spirit into our home, into our marriage, into our lives in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come out from among them. Um, there's a young woman that has started coming to some of our, our sessions and our meeting. And um, she is struggling right now. In, at this point right here, God is wanting to separate her out for the work that he has called her to do. But she is still wanting to hang on to some of those friendships in the dominal realm. And they are telling her one thing. And then she comes to where we are. She enjoys the, the freedom of the spirit. She enjoys hearing the word of God, the truth. And she's growing. But when she goes back to this other group, she wants to defend herself. She wants to uh, defend what she's learning. She's just recently received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And there are some people that are speaking against that uh, that are in her other group. She's going to have to make a decision. And all of us have to make those decisions. Amy Elizabeth would not be alive today if we had stayed where we were, where the people were, wonderful people. But they knew nothing about healing. They knew nothing about miracles. And they would tell us, well, you're just going to have to accept what's going on. We weren't willing to accept what was going on, were we? No. We weren't willing for our daughter to die. And so we began to seek the Lord and search out the Lord and learn about healing, listen to healing evangelists, and, and receive that, that input into our lives. And so we had to leave. We had to leave that place because we were not to defend. You, you do not have to defend the word of God. You receive the word of God. You allow the mighty wind of God to work in your life and you go forward. But that mean, that might mean that you have to sever some relationships. And, and that's and come out from among them and be separate. That's what the Lord wants you to do. He wants you to be his. And he wants the wind to blow. In Matthew 25, 32 through 33 is where Jesus separates out the, the sheep from the goats. Do you know that Jesus knows who believes and who doesn't believe? He knows your heart. He knows whether you're believing or whether you're not believing. And I want to believe. And I want Jesus to see that in my heart. I want the Holy Spirit to, to bring that out. That I am moving by faith. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. In Acts 13. We have a group of prophets and teachers. And here we have Saul, who is actually Paul, and Barnabas. And they were praying and they were worshiping the Lord. And then the Holy Spirit began to speak. The wind began to blow. And he says, as they ministered to the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, separate out Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. 
And so see, the Holy Spirit knows when you're ready. The Holy Spirit knows if you're, you know, he knew that Joy was ready uh, to go and to share with this woman. And it increased that woman's faith and the child was healed. And, and, and the Holy Spirit did what he wanted to do. Hallelujah. You know, and I want you to know that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. He's not separating you from himself. It says here in Romans 8, verse 35, that tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword, nothing can separate you from the love of God. So I want you to remember that. The separation is not from God. It's a separation from the worldly, earthly things that hinder what the Holy Spirit wants to do. The mighty wind of God is blowing. And I believe that he's blowing in this session tonight in the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to apply this, this message here. And so I want to go to Ezekiel 37. In verses 7 through 10. And this is where Ezekiel is told by the mighty wind of God, the spirit of God, to go into the valley of the dry bones. You know, once I was a dry bone, once you were a dry bone. So I, so I prophesied, he was told to prophesy to the wind. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. See, the mighty wind of God, there is a sound, there is a noise. And suddenly there was a rattling and the bones began to come together. Hallelujah. Bone to his bone. Not bone to bone, but bone to his bone. Hallelujah. What does that mean? Is that we're becoming part of him. He's in us and we're in him. That makes us one. One body. One faith. That's where we are. Indeed, as I looked, the muscles and, and the flesh came upon them. The skin covered them. But there was no breath. There was no breath in them. So he said, prophesy to the wind. Prophesy to the wind, son of man, and say, breath. Thus saith the Lord, come from the four winds, whoo, hallelujah, and breathe on these that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood on their feet, an exceeding great army. Hallelujah. hallelujah. God has a mighty wind that he wants to blow through you. Amen. Good. He wants you to go to your government buildings. Are you familiar with the seven mountains that Cindy Jacobs uh, has put forth? Others have put forth the, the seven mountains of influence. Religion, family, entertainment, government. What are the other Did two? Say education. Education. There's one more. Anyway, there's seven mountains of influence. And God is wanting you to go and breathe. Breathe. Prophesy to your government. Prophesy to the school system. Prophesy to the hospitals and the medical uh, clinics. If you have any type of uh, uh, abortion clinics. Prophesy. Life to them. Life. Hallelujah. You know, there's a man that lives in um, Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico. And that's what he does every day. There is an abortion clinic there. And he goes every day, sits in his car, and he prophesies 
life to everyone who walks into that clinic that those babies will live in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And not be murdered. Amen. So praise the name of Jesus. I'm I'm giving you a challenge to go and to use this message. Use the mighty wind of God. Hallelujah. And speak out what the Holy Spirit is telling you to speak. Hallelujah. Here we are on Super Tuesday, they call it. And there's lots being done in the political arena uh, right now. And we can make a difference. We can make a difference. Come and breathe on these that they might live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath came upon them and they stood up a great and mighty army. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, Lord, I want to bring the wind. I want more wind. I want more wind in my life. I want to be stirred up and I want to be shaken up. And I want to be separated out. Hallelujah. So how do you bring the wind? And I want to go to my last scripture. And this is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Very familiar. We, we give it a lot. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all there in one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were. And then we, the fire comes down upon their heads. So in this passage right here, what brings the wind? How can we bring more wind into our life? You go back to read it again. Okay. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord and in one place. Hallelujah. To me, this is unity. And this is agreement. And this is desire. They were there because they wanted to be there. Amen. 120 people, they wanted to be there. They wanted to go to that prayer meeting. They wanted to go to that deliverance session. They wanted uh, to be used of the Lord. And this is where they got everything they needed. Through the mighty wind of God. Hallelujah. Through the Holy Spirit. They received everything that they needed to do the job. And so I'm encouraging you to bring forth the wind, to ask for the wind. And let's just do that right now. Let's just do it right now. Father, just say it with me. Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I ask for more of your wind. I ask for more of your wind. More of the Holy Spirit. More of the Holy Spirit. Come to me. Come to me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let me be used of you, Lord. Let me be used of you, Lord. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.